What's up, everybody? Welcome to Metal Remains Backstage. My name is Manuel, and with me is Mr. Olaf from Amaranth. Hi, Olof. How are you? Very good. How are you, Manuel? Oh, I'm great. We are here in Madrid, in La Riviera, for the Amaranth Beyond the Black uh, co-headline tour in Europe. How has this tour been so far? It's been really amazing. I mean, obviously, we had the pandemic yeah. lasting until quite recently. Yeah, you had to postpone it one year, right? Yeah, exactly. We already started the planning of this tour maybe at the end of 2018 or the beginning of 2019. Yeah. So I remember. That, yeah, so that means that it's been in the planning now for three years. So uh, when we had to postpone it, it was uh, yeah, it was a disaster for us because we really wanted to support the Manifest yeah. album with a proper tour and yes, yes. to play these songs uh, live that we've been you know working really hard on. So to finally be able to tour at all because we haven't really toured now in a proper tour bus doing many shows in a row for two and a half years. Oh, you you must have missed it. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's a completely different lifestyle. You get to um, see a lot of different countries. You know play for all the different fans, see their reaction to the new songs and mm -hmm. so on. So, uh, yeah, we're pretty short way into the tour still. Six, seven shows, something like that. Mm -hmm. Another 22, three to go. Okay, cool. So it's very exciting. I hope you enjoy the rest of the tour. I'm yeah, sure you're gonna do it. Left. Amaranth is a band that enjoys a massive following, and not only from the more hardcore metal fans. Uh, its reach is very wide, and it attracts even fans with more mainstream sensibilities. What do you think is the reason for this? I think we've always combined a lot of different genres, and um, it's, it's also about the style itself, because um, metal lyrics tend to be about depression, war, death, that kind of thing. And while I think that's actually really important to deal with, we wanted to have a little bit more positive take on things, yep. so as to be uplifting yeah. and show that there's also um, another side to the darkness, essentially. Yes. We deal with some darker themes as well, but it's mainly focused on the positive things. And I think this is something that maybe less metal people can actually identify themselves with a little bit. Yes. And then we all obviously have some elements in the music that comes from outside, mm -hmm. metal. So. Um, yeah, and we also have like a singer like Elise, she's not your typical yeah, metal she's, front metal she's woman. Very, she's, she's very energetic and she captures the audience easily. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I think uh, younger girls will see somebody like Elise singing in a band who uh, doesn't... By the way, happy, happy birthday to Elise. She, yes, she has her birthday happy yesterday. Birthday. Yeah, we were celebrating her uh, yesterday. Yeah. I'm also planning a um, big birthday dinner in uh, Milan also awesome. in a few days. So that will well, be nice. congratulations to you as well. Uh, how would you describe the sound of your band to uh, the more traditional metal fans that haven't heard yet? Uh, heard it yet? I would say that essentially and fundamentally we are a metal band mm -hmm. because I think at the beginning people were a little bit confused. Like, is this a pop band with some guitars? But uh, all of us, maybe with the exception of Elise, but also uh, Elise, comes from a metal background. I mean, we played in a bunch of metal bands since we were. 14 years old. Mm. So the core of um, Amaranth is definitely metal, but just like I said uh, before, we try to incorporate a lot of different elements and we try to keep an open mind to what we do. Because I think sometimes the metal genre can be a little conservative. Yep. And in the 80s there was a bunch of elements that were infused into metal. So if we always thought that metal cannot develop, every single band would sound like Black Sabbath and we wouldn't like that. Yeah, so, we would be stuck. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Last year we got the video for PVP, which is the national anthem for the Sweden's eSports League. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell us about having that honor and what's your involvement with the gaming industry? Yeah, it came a little bit as a surprise. It was the um, Scar Symmetry Meshuggah guitar player Per Nilsson's okay. brother okay. who <laughs> asked us if we wanted brother's to do this. Brother's neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> brother's neighbor's dog. Um, no, anyways, because uh, Per from Scar Symmetry, he, he said that I think this band will be a good idea for something anthemic and something yeah. uplifting and to make like a fighting song, yeah. basically. So they invited us to, to do the project, we wrote the song, we went to Poland to record the video. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, because of this now, we are invited to a lot of gaming events and yeah. we're doing some gaming uh, endorsements and stuff like that. And I mean, me and Nils and Morten and also the guest growler Richard, we're all, you know, huge gamers. Like PS5 and PC, and you know, so I even bought language. a little Switch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, it's really nice to um, take part of that scene a little bit and infuse these things. We played at a gaming convention two, three years ago called the Dreamhack in uh, Sweden. It's one of the biggest in the world. Okay. That cool. was really cool with like lots of computers everywhere, and then we come with the fire and uh, heavy metal. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been a spectacle for them. We recently enjoyed a new single for the song Find Life. Mm -hmm. The video for it is very fiery, to say the least. And in our weekly podcast that you should check out at youtube.com slash metal remains, we make summarized versions of the new metal videos. And for yours, it was uh, Elise and friends dry their hair to the flames during a blackout. Because you are over there in, in, the, in between of, of this. What, uh, what can you tell us about this video and song? It's funny, actually, because, um, and that's a very good description, by the way. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. But... Um, no, it's uh, interesting with this video because I saw plenty of people that were writing that, yeah, but this is just um, a green screen and with uh, digital fire. And I'm like, no, it's... It's actual fire. Yeah, it's real fire. <laughs> it, it shows. I knew because of the reflections and all that. You can't fake that. No, exactly. I, 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 I seen it from the production standpoint. I, I know that's... That's not a uh, fake flame. <laughs> no, exactly. So what we wanted for this video, because we're kind of known to make these, you know, big elaborate videos like Archangel, Big Castle, mm -hmm. or hunger, big explosions and stuff like that. And for this song that is a little bit more intimate in the lyrics and yep. like in the style of the song, we wanted something that was a little bit more close up. So for the first time in a very long time, we actually worked with Patrick Uleas again. That's a very good video and it, it, it's a taste of what's to come. Mm -hmm. And talking about that, uh, you also released Crystalline, a calmer song with a gorgeous video uh, that you, you should check out. Are these singles part of a, an upcoming album that you can talk about? Yes and no. I mean, to, to be perfectly honest, that's that's kind of still in the planning phase also. Okay. But I can say it like this. Obviously, the, we had the pandemic. Yep. And while we didn't start to write music immediately, at some point we started to kind of get into that phase. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I can I can say that we are definitely like hard at work for doing an album, but we are not in a rush to do it. Okay. So um, we got just gonna take it a little bit as it comes, but it will. Um, I would say it's like a 99% chance that we will have a new album out next year. Okay, so pay attention to that. Pay attention. <laughs> and Amaranth, it's uh, known to have been to Mexico and Argentina previously, uh, a few years ago. Are you planning to go back to Latin America soon? I hope so. I really do. We had, we had a fantastic time the last time we were there. Because okay. it was the only time that I've ever been to um, Latin America, if you don't count Mexico, because that would be more it central. Is. No, they, 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 uh, Mexico to... Chile, uh, Argentina, that's all, all that is Latin America. Right. Everything uh, below the, the gringos, you know? The yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> the gringos. <laughs> and uh, we played in Sao Paulo and uh, in uh, Rosario. Mm -hmm. And also in um, Argentina. Buenos Aires. Okay. Exactly. And it was yeah, such an amazing experience. Some of the best fans in the world, if not the best. Okay, you and hear it from the men too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was a little bit smaller shows. We played at this uh, co um, place called Manifesto Bar mm -hmm. in Sao Paulo. Almost like our album, Manifest. And it was, uh, yeah, it was crazy. Was destined to be. Yeah, it was destined, exactly. And it was a um, yeah, crazy atmosphere and a great experience and everything. So I hope we can do it soon. But it's also something that we're looking at right now, okay. I can tell you. We're going to be anxiously waiting. And Olaf, before we go, can you share us what's your favorite backstage experience? Favorite backstage experience? Um, I would say, like if you take, for example, the Man Manifesto Bar <laughs> experience, because the backstage was almost as big as the venue itself. Wow. And we met a lot of uh, fans there because we had a meet and greet. And we had a really good time. Sometimes a meet and greet is like, something that you need to do. Mm -hmm. It's always super nice to meet the fans, yep. but the promoter says that you have exactly 10 minutes, but this was like after the show and we were just hanging out with the fans for okay. for like a couple of hours and there was oh, opera great. guy singing and yeah, it's uh, unfortunately we had to cancel the uh, VIPs and oh, the yeah. greets because um, there's still COVID going around mm -hmm. and these things. And while it's not a, as much of a problem as it used to be, mm -hmm. 
uh, we have three singers, and if any of them catches COVID, yeah. like Elise got really sick a few days ago. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. It was, it was a shame. You couldn't perform in, uh, in England, right? Yeah, in Manchester, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time in our entire career that we had to cancel a show. Because the, the thing is that we haven't toured for two and a half years, so our immune systems are way weaker than <laughs> yeah. they used to be. And if we have the meet and greet, we shake hands, we do the hugs, we do the pictures, and then everyone gets sick immediately. So mm -hmm. sorry about that, but we had to cancel it. But next time. Yeah, next time. Uh, guys, uh, follow Amaranth, check out their videos, pay attention to what uh, they're going to announce, because I'm sure uh, that work that's coming up is going to be real cool. But until then, stay metal. Stay metal.